Hello and welcome back to part two of my first video podcast focusing on the people working in the entertainment industry. My name is James and I'm a headshot photographer and videographer from Greater Manchester here in the UK. The following video podcast is in two parts. The first part is all about Mark and Kelly and their massive shared love of everything entertainment. This video podcast picks up where part one ended with Mark and Kelly introducing us to their short film, Transfusion. So let's jump straight in. Okay, right. You've mentioned it a little bit earlier. Let's move on to this. Uh, I believe you made a, a short film called Transfusion. Well, we'll start with how it came about. Yes. Yeah. Um, again, it all ties into sort of our life and acting and life of an actor, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I um, At the start of lockdown... Because all our jobs, all our work is uh, hospitality, entertainment-based. That all stopped. We lost everything. Just and you know, because yeah. we work together, and we, we don't our have any job, other jobs, yeah. we work together. So everything. It's not like stopped. one of us is working. Yeah, the income you know, a day stopped. job in a, a shop or an office or no. whatever, and the other ones. Doing so we literally different. the night we went into lockdown, the pubs went, Panto went, holiday parks went. Our livelihood completely. Yeah. Television both stops, of us. reality TV nothing. stops, acting um, stops, everything just stops. And it was a massive wake up call <coughs> because it was like we've we've nothing to fall back on. That's what we did. Yeah. Um, one of our one of our sort of other um branches is um the property makeover, uh DIY design, which is why we did the Channel 4 show, yeah. Your Room or Mine. We were designers and creatives on that, weren't we? We did, yeah. We did uh, but that. we'd always done. I've always, from being sort of 14, 15, my dad was a builder. So when I wasn't acting and doing all that, I was in the back of a van with a cement mixer at seven in the morning. Uh, so I decided at the start of the lockdown, if the government are going to stop us, I mean, don't get me started on politics. <laughs> I don't usually sort of enter those waters, but I am quite passionate about it. They wanted to, Boris wanted us to retrain cyber security, do something else. There was nothing else that we could do apart from tiling, painting. So I decided I'm going to become a plasterer. I don't know why, it, it, I, I just woke up one day and thought, I like plastering, I enjoy it. I think it's because we were like renovating and doing little things. Yeah. And you were brilliant at tiling, yeah. brilliant at painting. But you always had to wait for that plasterer, plasterer to come. And he was like, I might as well do it all. I so I, they fought me, they argued, but I, you know, I, I proved that I was right. So they paid five grand to send me on um, a couple of uh, plastering courses, not the, the two day ones or the six week ones. I mean, you know, a year long yeah, yeah, plastering right. and rendering skimming course. Anyway, they paid for that. Um, so I had another skill that if anything ever happens again, for any reason, and there's no hospitality, there's no acting, I've got something that I can support my family comfortably. Um, but while I was doing it, um, we started doing some <laughs> we started doing some rendering as part of the training, which is um, concrete based really with lime um, and concrete. And the, the tutor said, oh, you know, nobody, allegedly you can get a reaction to this. I've been doing this 20 years. No one's ever had a bloody reaction to the lime in the cement. Don't worry about it. Don't wear any gloves. You're okay. Uh, let's just crack on. So we did like three, four hours rendering away with this sand and lime and, and concrete. And after about an hour or so, my hands started to tingle all along my knuckles, all my thumbs. Um, anyway, an hour and 20 minutes later, all the skin started falling off. Um, really raising the tone of this podcast, aren't we? But it's quite serious. Yeah, um, and within sort of an hour and a half, two hours, I had to drive home because nobody knew what the hell was going on with my hands. I've never heard Mark cry, and I could hear in his voice. And it went, was pain Helen. like I'd never he said, known. I don't know, I'm driving, but I've damaged my hands. And I was like, what are you on about? He said, at, at college, I've damaged my hands. And he mm. was like, but I think they're quite bad, I can't look. And I, yeah, I think like, they might be quite bad. That. And I thought for him to say, because he never complains about anything, I was like, for him to say this, I dread to think what I'm going to yeah. be saying. It burnt right him. down to the, the skin bone. on my knuckles and all around I've still got so, scars and stuff. Well, we well the, the, the listeners are going to say, first of all, they don't believe you that Mark doesn't complain. <laughs> Why would they say that? Do you know what? He doesn't, Why would they he, say he, that? He doesn't moan. He's not like a man that has flu. He's never I'm not a hypochondriac. No, you know, he, he's, he's no sympathy when anyone's early. And how did that lead into... So we went to the hospital and they said that he might have to have skin grafts. Yeah, That's what it came they were about nice about it. They, said you, they didn't say what, they said you might have to... Um, 
and a guy was sat with us did in the waiting room. Find them. Well, well, we're all right. Oh, we're away with it. If you saw the I pictures yeah, of how they were, I've still got the scars. I don't know if you can see that, but I've still got scars. Um, but we were, sat, we were sat in the burns unit with some guy who put a fire out with his some feet. Some guy. And he was to- yeah, no, the guy that put the fire out with his feet. It was the middle of, <laughs> it was Withenshaw, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, some- staff, honestly, the burns unit at burn. Withenshaw Hospital, absolutely incredible. So, They're so good. They were chatting about the we're skin the- grafts. We'll move on because we could be It was a guy in, in prison greys <laughs> and crutches. That's the guy. All right, mate. How are you? Yeah, no, nice. Yeah, what are you wrong. doing, wrong. mate? Was he Welsh? Yeah, was he German? <laughs> yeah. Do yeah, we have to stay? It, it was really, so, yeah. I, so I, yeah. I wouldn't cross him and he's... So he overheard the nurses say, you might have to have, um, you know, a skin graft. And he just looked so anyway, hey, oh, mate, mate, yo, I've no. still got a little bit left on me ass yeah. if you want to use said, a bit of that. He said, yeah, he said, he said, where does this skin come from if you skin graft? And yeah, I, where does I skin went... Come from? Yes. And he went, no, and that's when he shouted, he went, I've got some you can have. He was he looks covered. Like me. I was he was like, covered. I'm not having his in, ass on my fingers. He burned everything on him, hadn't he? Yeah, he was, oh. With a petrol bomb at his ex-girlfriend's house. Yeah, that's how nice But he, he said, yeah, mate, yeah, I've got a bit of skin left on my backside, on my ass if you want to, uh, if you want to use a bit of that. And I thought... Well, we could, you imagine, could you imagine knowing that you had his If you needed backside. a blood transfusion, if you needed blood you needed or skin, and the only option was someone like that, oh, my God. Yeah. And then I thought, what if, no, really, what if you did get blood from somebody that you didn't want it from or skin, which has blood in it, what else do you get? Because we know that they check blood transfusions and things for sort of diseases... <laughs> And you know, matching and all that kind of thing, they don't check it with DNA. So, you know, for example, if you've got the Yorkshire Ripper and he's there giving you three pints of blood. Can I just say now that you cannot catch anything, by the way, through blood? Yes. Just to put you, that out please there. Please do give it blood. Doesn't, yes, you please cannot give blood. catch anything. It is essential. Yes, it is it fictional. It's absolutely And we fictional. are going to have a warning on <laughs> the end of the film, uh, at the start of the film, and you know, something yeah. on the end to yeah. say it is. Fictional. This, this is fictional. This is Mark's light bulb moment, <laughs> which I'll try and put a light bulb. It really on. was. But I just sat there and I kind of, you know, I'm, I, yeah. I didn't imagine, you know, his backside skin. You on. really did. You went, what if I had his ass on my own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Mark! That's really love the tone. We started no, no, so well. And I, and I thought, well, you know, what if what if you did get blood that you needed off somebody yeah. you really didn't want? Can you catch anything else? Is there anything? Is there anything in the the theory that it, some DNA could be passed on? I thought, well, I, I don't believe so, but let's make something about it anyway. So and that's how it, that's how transfusion film. came about. Yeah, fantastic. Um, well, you've answered so many questions in that. Who do you work with in this? I mean, who who's the director? Who's the writer? The cast and crew. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we are. I, I wrote it um, with a little bit of help from uh, a guy called Noel J. Rainford, who does podcasts and things as well. I suffered it. <laughs> she suffered it <laughs> really? for a long time. Yeah, it's been a long, arduous process. Yeah. But great for actors. If you, that's the advice I'd give if you, you're an actor and the phone's not ringing. You know, write something, create something, do a podcast, do a film, yeah. do something for yourself. But yeah, I wrote it um, and then I got a team together. Anthony Mercer, who was from um, a graduate from uh, Bolton College. Yeah. He was our director. And uh, DOP. And DOP, yeah, yeah he filmed yeah. it. Um, we've got a brilliant cast, including uh, a guy called Jason Ward. The, I've, uh, I've heard of him. Have you, have heard, you heard of him? him? Yeah. He's very good. Yeah. He's up and coming. Yeah, he was Making all right. Out. He was all right. Um, he's in a lead role. Yeah, so I, I, I've got to be involved, obviously. Um, I've got a beautiful wife played by a beautiful wife. <laughs> That's her. Um, and we've got a, a mutual friend of ours, James. We've got Lynn Twill. Lynn Twill. Shout out to Lynn. Lynn. Oh, do you know what? Oh, Amazing. Lynn. I love her. Do you I know absolutely what? One of the, love her. She was one of the first person we, we um, asked. Uh, no, it was Who a Kathleen? joint decision. Who Do you know, because I was reading it. The cast are so it. good. We're no, fighting it over. We're fighting it's, it over It was difficult who. because when Mark was writing it and I kept reading it, Lynn was in my head when I was reading it. it. It's the person I pictured. Um, yeah. So when we started casting, I was like, oh, oh We cast God, it properly God, as well. A lot of actors who are creating are kind of using all the friends 
yeah. and get in for everything that they do. Yeah. You know, it's all the same groups, the same we, actors. We, we did it. We hadn't met any properly. of our cast before. Uh, like we didn't, we didn't. We hadn't, met Lynn, we, didn't, had we? we hadn't met any of the cast before, so we haven't just cast friends or people we knew. It was everybody did a cell tape for each character. Yeah, Luke Richards, um, Luke Richards, Lynn, and Luke were originally with the same agents. Yeah, um, Billy Doherty, absolutely amazing. Yeah, um, amazing. He's one of the leads. I'm watching that in edit at the moment. Yeah, the chemistry between the three of us. Patrick Jeffries, brilliant. Um, the S. Wade you there isn't actors. a weak link in the film. But we auditioned for them. It's... We actually genuinely auditioned. And we felt a bit, I felt a right fraud. Yeah. Um, talking about the film and the casting and everything. I felt a fraud because I'm an actor. I've spent 35 years acting. So for me to kind of, it felt like I was judging other actors and I didn't feel qualified. I didn't feel right doing it. But I felt it was necessary that well, we were, it was organic. The casting was organic. Yeah, yeah. And we got such a brilliant cast. <sighs> Amazing. So, did you see their their, their headshots, their self tapes? Their... We, yeah, we yeah. saw everything we saw, personally. We gave them we? a little section. And we gave them a self tape um, to do um, a monologue or a, yeah, a little clip yeah. and what have you. And, um, and yeah, and saying that. But again, being an actor, the biggest lesson I learned, and I wish I'd learned it 25, 30 years ago, because we were casting it. We saw things from the other side of the camera. Oh, because we saw the acting that, process. The cell tapes we got for the roles. Oh, they were brilliant, weren't they? They were all amazing. Except so for one said, or two, which I, were just. I, I, couldn't, I think they, I couldn't be a they casting were taken for something like, else. I was like, I want to be a casting director. I think this is an amazing job. And when they were in front of me, I was like, I can't pick. They're amazing. Yeah, saying no to actors. It's like, and it's the worst thing having to tell someone no. And it was not because. And you're saying, no, you're brilliant. You're mm. amazing. You'd be perfect for the When role. a casting director but says to us, you're having to nitpick. A casting someone, director yeah. says, we want to give everybody the job. Yeah. And you think, oh, yeah, you're just saying that. You're just being nice, you know. Yeah. Every actor, nearly every actor that self tapes, we're right for it, but in different ways. And we just wanted to say, oh. We just had we to just... go with your vision on who But we had to stay as... true to the story as I'd written it. Yeah. And the view that, the vision that I had for it. Yeah. Um, so it was all done organically. And we used um, a new actor. We used a new so actor good. as well, didn't we? Um, Aaron Middleton. Aaron Middleton, yeah. Um, that was just getting into the business. He's done about six months acting, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Just like, um, for revelation. quite a crucial role, really. Revelation. Wow. It's horrible. Wow. He's such a lovely bloke. Yeah. He's from Portsmouth. I'm not doing the accent because you'll say it's French or Welsh. But he he's from Portsmouth. He absolutely blew us away. And he's obnoxious in the lead role. He's horrible and amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So, but it's been brilliant. And he felt, because he'd never done this kind of thing before, he's like, oh, you know, I'm out of my depth with... Because a lot of yeah. actors that have done a lot of short films before... I hadn't done a short film It was film all the new actors mine. together. Um, but yeah, he was brilliant. It was... But yeah, they, they brought the vision to life and it, it was good to create something. And it's a hell of a lot bigger now than we thought it was going to be. Yeah. So it was meant to be 20 minutes short. I think yeah. it's 30 minutes now. Yeah, in the moment, yeah. And growing. Mm. So and growing. Is it an expensive thing to do? I mean, how did you go about funding this? It was, the funding is probably the hardest part, I'd say. And you did that on your own. And I kind of did it on my own. Did, we went to, we, we got lots of advice from the BFI, the British Film Institute uh, and other organisations. Um, but they have um, sort of means tested and they kind of have two rounds of funding every year. So if you get one, you're very lucky. Yeah. If you don't, you've got another chance. But we didn't want to wait sort of 12 months, 18 months to see whether we'd got the funding. And again, it was another challenge. I thought, well, do you know what? How much do we need to make this film? And I estimated we needed about 4,000. I think we've used, I think we spent about five and a half to six, including lots of post-production. And I thought, I can, I, can, I can sell sand to an Arab, I to an Eskimo. Yeah. I can raise money. What's this? And it took a little bit longer. Um, and then we kind of came up with it, ideas, ways to do it, mm -hmm. uh, which included fundraising online, social media. Yeah. We got headshot photographers who donated um, their time and um, headshot sessions. Um, oh, that was you, <laughs> oh, James. Um, Smart advertising there. Yeah, yeah so we, we kind of used our brains to um, get people to help us with the advertising and the fundraising. And then you we had local companies where we live. Yeah, um, local companies donated. So they, we saw the executive producer yeah. credits at £500 a time. Yeah. We had um, showreel companies 
that donated, as you donated your headshots and things, they donated show reels, reels. Uh, yeah. show reel shoots. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, the public, the general public, actors and non-actors, um, kind of donated. We were giving loads of things away, didn't we? Yeah. We sold okay. magic props as we well, magic, magic props, fun tips. Yeah, we did quite a few functions ourselves, didn't we? Children's parties and things. Yeah. Functions. Yeah, we did fundraisers, fundraisers where we did sort of live gigs and stuff. Yeah. But um, ultimately, yeah, actors, actors and the public really came together, and donated, you know, as little as two pound, five pound, fifty pound. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. Uh, that was the hardest thing. But once we got through that, yeah, it's been worthwhile, hasn't yeah. it? So what stage is it at now? Well, we it's an edit at the moment, and we've got a guy, James Twyman. Shout out to James. He's yes. doing an absolute Big up James. He's a wizard. He's a filmmaker. Job. He's a, a, a one-man band, um, but he's got lots of experience doing his own things. Um, but he's a filmmaker. He's a cameraman, DOP. Yeah. He's absolutely amazing at um, VFX, visual effects, um, yeah. Photoshop and things. And he's sort of pulled it all together. He, he took it apart, really, didn't he's, he? He kind of, yeah. We had a, a few we bumps had, we along the way. We had a basic way. edit and he's took it apart. And the vision wasn't meeting what we had. So yeah. he's took it, he's separated it all, put it all back together, added his own source. He's, he's really into... I think into... it was nice because he's a director as well. He, he originally yeah. was going to work on it with us, but time didn't allow. Um, so now... He's kind of taking it away from us a little bit and he's putting his spin on it. Because I think we've fresh watched eyes, it so many yeah. times, fresh eyes, because we're very critical. I think, and especially when you're in it as well, you're looking at yourself. It was thinking, written as a comedy thriller. So I'm, I'm kind of taking a step back from it now and going, yeah. you do what you think now. Let's he's into it horror. Over. He loves horror um, in anything of that genre. So he's put his own sort of horror touch on it. Yeah, hasn't yeah it? which it needed. It oh, it's good. Yeah. So, so when will it be released? Do, do we have a future date? Release dates, we are looking hopefully over the next few weeks. I'm saying, I'm thinking, what it's got to do is film festivals we're aiming yeah, for to begin it's with. It's got to it? just go to sound now. So, once it's finished, which is nearly at the end of yeah. edit now, we then take it back to our sound girl Paula, who was there. She's amazing. And then she's going to just add all we're the sound. We're looking about three to four weeks. However, 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 we do have, and we've been asked for this by all the cast, the crew. Um, all the, the fundraising people, everyone connected with the film yes. have been asking for a trailer and we have one. Thanks. We brought that yes. and we'd love it, James, if you would. And can I just say that we're not showing show anybody and we've told all the actors in the show that they have to watch this to see the trailer as well. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so we'd like it to be an exclusive. exclusive if you wouldn't mind showing it for us first time. Should we play that trailer now then? Do you know what? That will be good. And I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but congratulations on your first wedding anniversary. I think my dad's gonna get me a pregnancy test as well, babe. See, I don't know how you can go from this to that little prick. Because she thinks I'm enough. Oh, fucking arse, you did die, dickhead. He's losing too much blood. We need to be quick. We're losing him. Becky, I'm not a fucking child. The anger just starts, takes over me. In this theory of like, personality traits and stuff being passed on through blood donors. Britain's most notorious serial killer, Brian Atkins, has finally been recaptured. I didn't do this. They're covering up. They're lying. So, so where's it? You're going to go for film festivals? You're going to? Is that where people will be able to see it? So many people said, look, you know, if it turns out the way we think it's going to turn out, you should be going for festivals, share it with other people and other filmmakers and, and all that. So that's where it's going. And then you never know. Hopefully, I mean, somebody like you know Amazon Prime might sort of monetize it, streaming site. 
Yeah. I can't see that. I'd really love for a streaming site to say it's good enough to put on there even, at, you know, a, a pound of viewing or yeah. whatever they charge. Well, yeah, we just want to we just want to get it out to as many people, and we we I feel we owe that we to, owe the to the actors, actors and the, and crew. the people that give their time to do it. Yeah. Yes, it's you know vanity project a little bit for us. I think we'd be lying if we said, and we said otherwise. We'd never do it again. Yeah, we are. We are going to do another we're one. To, we've got a to. horror on the <laughs> we've way. We've got a horror on the way <laughs> and a possible transfusion too as well. So but the like, wider uh, audience, the the cast, you know, Patrick, um, Lynn, Billy, all the the, the cast that are involved gave everything and they're so good yeah and the crew the time and effort they put in so we want to get it seen by as many people yeah. as possible yeah. Yeah. so we've got to get as many people as possible to watch this podcast and then they'll watch the trailer and then, and then they'll want to watch the actual film and then they might stream it and i can buy myself a new jacket and new teeth <laughs> <laughs> so well that was going to be one of my questions will you do it again i was going to say are you going to buy new teeth <laughs> and a new jacket because i don't like that jacket i don't look like beth's got one of those <laughs> like oh, shut up. would you do it again we kept saying we're never we'll ever never do it again because it's he, been you know cancelled that many times it caused divorce about three times it's been cancelled so many times we're not you know shove oh, it in the, we're not yeah. touching it he's a she's a with that oh that's yeah. gone wrong everything that's the challenge of independent filmmaking. It was a lesson, a Keep massive going. learning curve. Yeah, find a really way was. over the hill or yeah. under the fe- to find a way around all of the issues and the problems. Keep going. And we said, we're never going to do it again. Um, and Noel, who added some of the material to this for us, he came up with a podcast, uh, no, a drama project, wasn't it? Yeah. Audio yeah. drama An project audio we drama. did a few we years did, ago. We did over lockdown, he did some audio um, drama. About advice, zombies and horror and it's brilliant. And we've been saying ever since, we always said to him, look, this should be visual. You should make this into a film or a short. And he's kindly given us the rights. And now and we've said, done one. We've gone for it. <laughs> and now, yeah, we think we're Spielberg. Oh, now we've done one. We we're think we're, uh, we're Jonathan Southcott, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there a standout funny moment? There's been, I think, the, the cast provided the funny moments, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, Because yeah, if you say your favourite moment from the film... I wouldn't have one favourite moment, I don't think. But I've got I've got a few favourite moments. Your favourite his favourite moment, she which is get really it. weird. Weird brain. No, your favourite moment is just one line from an actor. Noah. From, Noah Bird. Noah, yeah. He was very and he very played good. a police officer. And he just says one line and he plays it really dry and it wasn't even a funny line. He was a police officer though. He I was a police officer. He used to be a police yeah, officer. Yeah. Um, but he's got he's just got one line. And he just all he says was Gonna have to do that, I'm afraid. Or I'm gonna have to no, do that. no, he doesn't say that. Oh, what does he say? No, he says. <clears throat> he said. <clears throat> spoiler alert. He said. I couldn't cuff you when you came in. You were too poorly. I'm gonna have to do that. And I just love the way he says. I'm gonna have to do that. Just throws it away. <laughs> but it's it's his tone of voice. It's the way he delivers it. And every time she says, you know, you need to set the pots out or you make up seal. I'm gonna. Go, gonna have to do that. Gonna have to do that. <laughs> gonna have to do that. <laughs> But well, yeah, we've got lines off Lynn, who played Auntie Pam. Oh, she's just brilliant. Patrick Jeffries, who plays DS Wakeman, who's um, one of our detectives uh, towards the end of the film. He just, he plays it in, without giving too much away. He plays sort of two sides to his character. Um, and he's just, he's just funny. He's brilliant. I don't even think he's tried. I think he, he, just, he it's I think him, he's he, brilliant. Him and Lynn are the two ca- comedy characters, aren't they really? They're the two that yeah. provide the laughs. Um, Lynn without trying, because it's Lynn. <laughs> Amazing. She's so underrated. Oh, it's so brilliant. good. Um, but yeah, when like we've been watching it and our children have had a quick glance, it's Patrick that gets the yeah. laughs, isn't it? Patrick, Patrick and Lynn, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Was the crash in that? The prison van? Yes, there is, which is... Because that crash looks amazing and expensive. The... And that was the point. We wanted to show not just two people sat at a bench. Yeah, We wanted different. to show something different. So to have a crash, we had ambulance, police, prison van, prison officers, real police yeah. there, roads cordoned Real off. paramedics. Um, yeah, real yeah. paramedics. The prison van, which um, Doncaster Restraints Museum, Aaron at Doncaster Restraints Museum, I know you're going to be watching this. If you like handcuffs... 
If you like any kind of restraint, no, it's not as, as bad as it sounds. It's not a CD. Um, yeah, Doncaster Restraints Museum. Um, he came up, we were searching for so long and people say, well, why don't you cheat it? Just get, you know, an Ivico. Is that how you say it? Ivico? Ivico? <clears throat> Just get an Ivico van and have it drive past. And we said, no, 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 no. We're not making a student film here. We're making a, a short film and I want a prison van. And we couldn't find one for love and the money. And then Aaron um, came up and said, well, you know, I run this restraints museum, which is all about the history of um, sort of shackles, handcuffs, buttons, anything policing. It's an absolutely brilliant place to take the family. Um, and he said, I've got a, I've just bought a prison van. Ooh. Well, really? He'd it's, actually, he'd actually just done um, a prom in it. You know, like you go in, um, like all the posh limo. guys, a limo. Instead of a limousine, yeah, yeah. He took a load of lads in Hiring a prison van. They thought they were the best. It was brilliant. So he, so kind, he, he was it amazing. Out. We agreed a um, a really, really good price with him. He was brilliant. And you know, he was willing to take literally peanuts to help us out yeah. make this film. Uh, but he said, you know, I've got um, uniforms when I do the, the live events. I said, well, you know, can we include those in the money we that we... included those. We even included yeah. Aaron as well. He yeah. was even and then he ended up on camera because <laughs> yeah. he's he's one of us at heart, isn't he? Of course he is. And he, 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 is. he looks convincing as a, yeah. a prison officer. Yeah. But, yeah, we got there in the end. We got so much support. He gave us all that. Yeah. yeah. And we, we tried to make it just stand out. And we've got a song, actually. We tried to... I wanted to, I wanted to break Copy it up so it's not just dialogue, yeah. dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. So we've got, there's um, a songwriter, I want to give him a shout out because we've known about him for, what, a good eight, nine, since ten we years. In Blackpool and since we did the, yeah, yeah, about ten years. Since we did about, the Pierce, yeah. the headlining. Um, and he's called Curtis Reed. And he's, um, I say unknown, he shouldn't be unknown. He's known to a few people. That's amazing. But he's called Curtis Reed, he's from Blackpool. Yeah. And he's, he's a singer songwriter, but he writes such amazing songs. And the song that we've used, it's called Ghost. The song is one of the nicest songs I've ever heard. It's your favourite song, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of my all-time. Yeah. My favourite song, George Michael, Different Corner. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> it's up there. It's it's one of my all-time. I listen to it quite often, yeah, don't I? Yeah, It's just amazing. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if in one of the key scenes in the it, film... It fits perfectly. The wouldn't words, it be really nice if we used that song and when we put it over, the chorus and a verse, it's just like... Oh, just amazing, yeah, isn't it? It's like it was meant to be. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd love for to people to sort of watch the film or the trailer or whatever um, and sort of search for him on Insta and Twitter, Curtis Reed, and yes. listen to not just the ghost, but the rest of his songs yeah. as well. Yeah. So talented. And that was the joy with the whole film, yeah. bringing talented people from everywhere. So we're not going to see an advert where you two... Uh, you're you're on a Potter's wheel and we got Mark behind you and the music ghost. That's what came to mind straight away. <laughs> We tried doing that on Cold Strip, didn't we? We tried doing that on Cold no, Strip. It didn't work, it didn't work. That's why no. we got voted off, I think. <laughs> so is there a bloopers reel? We have a, we've not started putting it together yet, but we, we didn't realise how many bloopers we had. <laughs> Um, until we were looking through all the, the proxies in the, the we footage. Until we were looking through trying to place the yeah. together. It's all blue. Trying, trying to find a good, a good clip to use. edit down and put in one of the dramatic scenes. It's not called transfusion now, it's called oh. blue. Yeah. And yeah. then we've got we've got Lynn with oh, a, a sausage. Amazing. You know, just... We've got Billy who doesn't know who he's playing. Find someone doesn't know what in character life, he is. That's find brilliant. someone in life that looks at you the way Lynn looks at a wall's banger. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We've got Patrick who just forgets... Oh, that's brilliant. Forgets that, you know, he's making a film and tells you what he thinks on action. Yeah. You yeah. know, with hand gestures. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Billy. Billy just made me Billy laugh. Billy Doherty. Yeah, he didn't know who he was playing, did he? Yeah, forgot who he was yeah, playing, he forgot who he was, was forgot where he was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's... Um, there's one part, it just makes me laugh in the bloopers reel because Mark, um, Mark's obviously missing at this point in the film. Little spoiler. Um, and me and Billy are together and the police come. And Billy, <laughs> Billy keeps saying, yeah, yeah, I'm friends of Ryan, Mark's character. I'm friends of Ryan, pointing to him in the background. <laughs> yes, I'm in the background, mate. Dad, but I... he's not here. He's not here. And, oh, he, he felt himself oh. doing it. It didn't make me laugh. Well, there he is. I'm, I'm friends. So we might have to we present see? the um, bloopers reel. Yeah. Do we present it and yeah. put that together like it'll be all right on the night. Yeah. I think it's more crew bloopers reel, really. One. <laughs> yeah, or oh, the crew. <laughs> Honestly, we had a, a, a lad called Sam, who's um, he was the AC, the assistant cameraman on the um, on the shoot, um, 
he did a little bit of editing to begin with, but he kept putting, I think it's a standard thing, but I've never oh. seen it. He kept putting things on the back of the um, clapperboard messages. Messages to us. Wow. <laughs> and some of the stuff he was writing on there is totally just wacko, yeah. but funny, yeah. so funny. And he didn't throw you, luckily. We, I didn't realise on the first few takes. <laughs> he couldn't see, he didn't have his glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise, but then once we realised, we were all kind of waiting, weren't we, to see what he put on to the back of it. Yeah, you wait and see what it says now. But yeah, the, the crew would say something, and just, it'd be a couple of seconds before he... Uh, action. Okay, so... Uh, and you can see it dawning on someone like... <laughs> I don't know what I just read. Funny. Yeah, it's going to be a blooper reel, isn't it? Yeah, they will. Can't wait. Definitely. Really looking forward to seeing this. Can't wait for it to be released. Um, just to be, what was the hardest part of it? Is it Because I've asked you about the funny moments and we've talked about the bloopers. Is this something that was really hard and you think, I'm going to change that for the next one? The hardest thing, I think, from my opinion, is getting actors together. Because I think in the words of one of our friends, Michelle, Michelle Parker, Parker, it's like Michelle. herding cats trying to get everyone together and availability at the same time on the days it you need It could not them. have been more apt, herding cats. <laughs> Actors, we are desperate, we're desperate for a job, we want an acting role, oh, we'd love to be in that. Yeah. Brilliant. Are you available uh, between the dates, the 10th, <laughs> And the 15th. Yeah, we give a week. So we said we're going to be filming over like six it's days. It's a week's filming. It's a week's filming. We can't say as yet when you needed, but you need to be free from this day yeah. to this day. Yeah. And then they come back with, I'm free Monday from 2.30, Wednesday from this, Thursday I can't, Friday. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag actors life. Oh, actors life. That's yeah. the best hashtag, yeah. isn't it? So that, because hashtag. I was left to deal with all the putting together what scenes we were filming when, who was available, and that yeah. was, yeah, I had to go in a quiet room for I that. I think the main so. challenges, though, are after the filming. I think that's the easiest bit. Once you, there was so many hurdles to get over and around that we almost didn't film. I mean, it was postponed twice because of COVID, because of other issues, because of lead actors booking a holiday when they knew they were going to be required for filming. Billy Doherty. <laughs> we've, had, we've had cast changes. We had more cast changes than Atomic Kitten, yeah, honestly. We did. You wouldn't believe. We actually had. I'll say now, one of our main characters, Aaron, the new actor, he's actually had to learn about three different parts. Yeah, And understood then swap. It. He was understood it. And he was playing, like, different characters for us until we eventually yeah, managed to Yeah, I won't give any names. We Billy Doherty. Billy Doherty. Uh, uh, but, but they all, I mean, they all did... They, they, stars aligned and they all ended up playing the Who characters that we wanted them to perfect, play, yeah. which was great. But the challenge is not when you're filming, even not when, when you filmed, it's you kind of expect it to come together really quickly once the camera stopped rolling. Oh, and it really doesn't. No, it no. takes so much time, effort, work, money, patience. I've learned patience. Yeah, yeah. And I think another thing for doing it again is crew together before cast because we ended up with cast together before crew I think because we was writing it and we got the story together yeah we, we did it ask about it, uh, uh, the wrong way around <laughs> we shouldn't have done it that way I think we crew did it the wrong first, way around then cast because um, we were ready to go before we were I think that was the actors in us yeah or the yeah. actor in we me it was like because I'm an actor I never write or think writing the it, whole script I think you can't write for a certain person yeah. as well because you tend to when you're writing yes, good or advice. you think oh, good this, advice. I'm going to write this for someone in particular I wrote it one of the roles I had um, one of my favourite actors he's just brilliant Steve Everts who's uh, a tw- have you got a bleep machine do you have a bleep machine available <laughs> you do <laughs> Well, do you know what? He's a lovely bloke, brilliant actor. He's a <laughs> um, But I had him in my head, and there was a lot of H's in that sentence then. <laughs> he was in my head for, like, all the way through from when I came up with the idea. Um, and I wrote with him in mind. It works out well in the end with, with uh, Edward, who plays Uncle Lenny. He was great in his own way, and he, he pulled it off. Not a problem whatsoever. But I wrote it with with him in mind, with Steve Everts. And then when I came to ask him, um, I kind of said, you know, Steve, please, you know, I'll chat to you on Twitter. That goes back to the over-familiarity that a lot of actors have got now that I was talking about earlier, about knowing the boundaries with casting directors, actors, blah, blah, blah. And because I spoke to him a few times and I was like, yeah, will you play Uncle Lenny? Will you have a look at me film? And he just went, no, sorry. You know, kind of, no, he didn't say that last bit. He just went, no, sorry. I, I don't know if he was busy or whatever. 
but he just couldn't and wasn't able to. And it was like, oh. The panic then, wasn't it? It's like, and I'd done that with a couple of characters, written them with somebody in mind. So as a non-actor, as a writer and a filmmaker, the biggest thing I've learned is don't write with a specific actor in mind if you can sort of get away with it. But it was your first film, wasn't it? So now yeah. you know yeah. all this. Yes. Well, yeah. we we actually we've devised um, reality <laughs> that, yeah, TV. I was say it was our first. Yeah, we actually have got a few. It's our first things. drama, yeah, first, first drama, drama project. Yeah. We've devised lots of um, reality TV programs, which we've pitched to TV commissioners, to production companies. Yeah. Um, one of them nearly, very nearly, got made at and the start of lockdown. COVID happened, so we lost it. A property yeah. TV makeover. So if, if, listen, if any um, you know <laughs> entertainment companies are watching this, you know any uh, non-factual yes. sort of reality TV companies in the northwest area. If you want to be really sincere, you could go to this company. Go to this one. Yeah. Any <laughs> we developed our um, our pitch for it, the the pitch deck, which is the um, or the bump, if you like, for the the program. We developed it with a production company, but sadly they had to sort of choose where the money went. Yeah. Um, a Sally Lindsay one, which is. Not a problem because she's pretty amazing. amazing as well, isn't she? Uh, but we've still got the pitch deck, which we really want to get out there. It's a property makeover show. We present <laughs> it, we host it, we do the work. I use the skills that we've got. Um, and I don't want to get a proper job. Do you know a good plaster? Yeah, a good plaster. No, I know someone burns his hands. But... He's going to listen to the story <laughs> at least. Uh, so, yeah, but we've done that, but we've never done um, a drama project or anything like that. But uh, I knew we wanted to. I knew that we could. Yeah. Um, and we have. Well, thank you. We're coming to the end of the podcast now. Is there anything you want to say to anyone? There's nothing really, apart from literally just thank you to, as far as the film's concerned, because we did mire everybody. And um, we're aware of that, aren't we? We did, yeah. Just yeah. thank you so, so much. We're aware of it because everyone ignores us now. When we speak yeah. to people, they're like, oh, Please sorry. stop ignoring us. Please, <laughs> please, please, please unblock please. us. Have you noticed your numbers block? Yeah. Please unblock yeah. us. Yeah. Um, thank you to everybody, cast, crew, fundraisers, um, local suppliers, yes, uh, locations, suppliers. Wigan Council, everybody involved. Uh, but thank you to you. Let's yes, not thank, thank the main man himself. Yes. Thank you for the fundraising. Thank you for inviting us down. Thank you for allowing us to publicise it. Thank you for well, not thank yawning. You very much. That's self control, that, you know. I know. I'm proud been going for, for two hours. This is great. It's is it not, two hours? Yeah, and do you know what? You've done most wow. of the talking for once. Normally it's. Yeah, but he's going to edit gone. it, like they always do. He's going to edit it and make it sound like I'm just sat there going, eh, yes, dear. Mm-hmm. No, uh-huh. we can't. Mm-hmm. Your mouth's never stopped. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, well, Mark you. and Kelly. That Great was pleasure. great. Thank you for kicking off the first podcast. And uh, we all look forward to seeing Transfusion. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and listening to the Entertainment Video Podcast. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. And let me know who you would like to see on a future Entertainment Video Podcast.